So what just happened? Well, we shot an arrow out of a bow. You notice how I always make southern people sound dumb? It's not how I feel, it just doesn't seem the same if you uh, use a different accent. Here's what just happened. All of the, the, the stored energy that is inside the bow that we have created by drawing it back is now transferred into the knock of the arrow. It starts in the knock and very quickly goes from the knock up the shaft, into the shaft, all the way forward into this point. So as this arrow has left your bow, that energy has driven all the way forward and now the arrow is flying through the air, pulled from the front. This makes no sense to me because this is one piece, but I've done a lot of research on it and everybody says that that's basically the concept. Like they like to use the example of the baseball with a string tied to it. If you throw the baseball, the string trails behind it, but th to me that doesn't make any sense because again, you're starting at the rear and pushing something. But I guess if you think about it as energy is trying to, uh, energy is trying to go forward, then I guess it makes sense. So that's just what we're gonna go with. Dude, I'm a sweaty bastard. Well, we're outside, it's Tennessee. As this leaves your bow, it's going to flex and it's going to deflect harder than if you have less point weight on the front because it's trying to get that front end to move. And again, just like we were talking about with stabilizers, the heavier this is, it doesn't want to move. It wants to hold its, its place in space. So as that energy transfers forward, this shaft is going to deflect and flex, which is why it's very important if you're gonna go with a higher FOC that you have the correct shaft. Otherwise, you're never gonna get it to tune. We move to the second point, which is an arrow that is in flight that has a higher FOC is going to fly better than an arrow with that weight evenly distributed across the shaft. I gotta be honest, when I started an archery channel, I didn't anticipate that it was going to become a math slash physics slash engineering channel, but here we are. This this front tip we've already discussed is, is basically where the ball of energy is stored that is pulling this arrow forward. Because you've got a lighter shaft, anytime this starts to come out of line, let's just do kind of a big exaggerated movement. The wind that is consistently coming across this is going to be blowing this back down into line behind this point. This is one of the reasons that we use fletchings. A, to spin the arrow, but then B, to catch more wind to, to, to make the shaft spin and go straight as it's flying through the air. A lighter shaft makes that job of pushing it back in line behind the tip easier. It makes sense if this was a, a, a big, heavy, you know, like a broom handle. The wind is not going to have as much, as much effect because there's so much mass flying through the air. So less mass, the wind is going to be able to affect it more easily. So the reason that I'm screwing a hole in my deck and then putting in a fiberglass rod is to directly rip off a Dr. Ashby video that I watched. I know. I'm sorry. I would tag the video, but the quality of the video is so horrible you can barely tell what is going on, which drives me crazy because somebody like me who can make a decent video but has none of the knowledge that Dr. Ashby has when he's up there and he's just like So here's why there's a fiberglass rod going down into the deck. This represents penetration into an animal. Okay? So as the actual arrow has made contact, 
That's represented by the fiberglass rod going down into the deck. It creates a holding point for the tip. And what's going to happen, and this happens every single time, it doesn't matter you know, what angle the animal's at, none of that. When the arrow hits, it's not going to go straight through. There's always going to be some deflection in the shaft. When this deflection occurs, it's stealing energy away from the actual forward motion of the arrow. It's like, it's like there's too much, we don't know what to do, and it starts to bend. A higher FOC arrow with a lighter weight shaft is going to start that dance, and it's going to straighten quicker. The quicker this shaft can straighten itself back up to be back behind the tip and the point, the better the penetration is going to be to make it all the way through the animal. Keep in mind, this is all happening. What we're talking about right now is happening in one 280th of a second. If you're shooting 280 feet per second, if you're shooting 260, one 260th of a second. Think about what happens if this arrow goes halfway through and stops. The broadhead's sticking through one side, the fletchings are sticking out the other. The goal is not to hit and enter the animal. The goal is to hit and penetrate all the way through it. And I don't think that's arguable. We, everyone that I know would prefer a pass through, unless you're just thinking that I, I, I can recover the arrow if I recover the animal. That's stupid. You want to pass through. A higher FOC arrow with a lighter weight shaft that is going to bring itself back in line quickly achieves that goal better than a more evenly weighted arrow. I just re-watched the video, like the first literally eight minutes of this video. This The FOC stuff is a lot, and here's my problem with it. This the A lot of this stuff is me researching something and then regurgitating it to you. What I like to do is make something my own, do the research, test it myself and then bring this information out because that's one of the reasons I started this channel. I wanted to know more about archery, about the history of archery, the techniques and everything about that. And then I want to regurgitate it and bring it to you guys so that that when I'm explaining it, I really have to understand it. It really has to sink in. And this FOC stuff, I can only do fairly limited testing on. But I will say one thing. The higher FOC arrows that I was shooting today, I have two sets of arrows that are the exact same weight, but I've got one that's that's a higher FOC than the other one. They were grouping better, and they were hitting higher at 80 yards, meaning that the trajectory was better on those arrows. It wasn't crazy. It was about six inches at 80 yards. Here's the next part about what I want to say. Almost every other really experienced hunter that I've talked to listens to the Doc Ashby stuff and kind of goes, I'm not going to do that. Like you listen to a lot of the podcasts and they're going to be like, yeah, I'm cool. I need an arrow to actually get to the animal. One side of this is 100% math, inarguable physics and math. And then there's this other side of, but what if the animal turns? But what if the animal jumps the string? But what if the animal takes a step? And that trajectory side of this has to be something that is weighted heavily. That's one of the things about the Doc Ashby studies that I've read is they were basically all sub 30 yards with the majority of them sub 20 yards. I keep saying this is the last thing I'm going to say about this, but maybe this will be the last thing that I say about this. The Native Americans were able to penetrate buffalo using stick bows and heavy-ass wood arrows with rock tips. I looked up some of the numbers for them, and the estimated uh, draw weight was this. And the Native Americans were small dudes. Like, th these aren't guys that are going to be pulling 80 pounds on these things, and their draw length is probably going to be pretty short. Here's the arrow weights. That is insane. That's insane. We're shooting bows that are this much faster and we're shooting arrows that are this much lighter. The speed that we are achieving compared to these guys and with the... If I put all this in, it's valuable information. 
I'm going to have to make a part three video. And if I make a part three video, I can't post them separately because people are going to be pissed if we talk about FOC and I don't actually give some recommendations for some actual arrows for people to go buy. But I just might do that. <clears throat> Thank you guys for watching. I'm Brandon McDonald.